Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is Hannah, I am a Western Practical Astrologer. Okay so in today's video uh, we are going to be talking about something really exciting. Now in my recent videos about the origins of astrology and the zodiac we explored these questions about free will versus fate. Well, today we're going to take a closer look at fiat as we discuss the seven hermetic lots. Stay tuned because we are going to get into this. But before we do, make sure that you give this video a like if you do like it. Also make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to click the bell to keep yourself updated with new videos. And if you are interested in booking a reading with me, then you can visit my website, hannahselsford.com. There you can also find my practical astrology ebooks, guide, merch, cheat sheets, all that good stuff. All the links to these products will be in the description box down below. And if you want extra astrology content early, as well as guides and daily forecasts, head on over to Patreon. And I just want to say thank you so, so much to my patrons. As always, I hope you find this video to be helpful. Let's do this. All right, so first and foremost, the seven hermetic lots go way back to ancient astrology times. Many Hellenistic astrologers use the lots in their practice, especially the lot of fortune and the lot of spirit. And I believe modern day astrologers use them as well. And I even just want to take a moment to give a shout out to the Stars Made Me Do It podcast. I believe they're working on a series right now talking all about the lot. So make sure that you check out their podcast. And also, by the way, all the sources that I use in this video will be linked down below. So what exactly is a lot? Well, in astrology, lots or parts are constructed points based on mathematical calculations of three horoscopic entities. So looking, looking here at planets and angles, keep in mind the four angular points in the chart, which are the AC, the IC, the DC and the MC the Ascendant, the Imam Coli, the Descendant, and the Midheaven. The distance between two of the points is added to the position of the third point. And this third point is often the position of the Ascendant. This calculation helps us locate the lot. But what matters is if you have a day chart versus having a night chart. We talked briefly about day versus night charts in the Hellenistic versus psychological astrology video. So just to go over this, if your sun is above the horizon, typically houses 7 through 12, you have a day chart. But if the sun is below the horizon, typically houses 1 through 6, you have a night chart. Using the Lot of Fortune, uh, just as an example, the Lot of Fortune in a day chart is located by starting from the sun and then measuring the distance to the moon and then adding the ascendant. So you start from the sun in a day chart because the sun is the sect light during the day. On the other hand, the lot of fortune in a night chart is located by starting from the moon and then measuring the distance to the sun and then adding the ascendant. You start from the moon in a night chart because the moon is the sect light during the night. I'll include all of the calculations for the lots in this video. So don't worry if you don't get it right away, you can always refer back to this video. And what I'll also do is I will link a useful calculator in the description box. Thank you to horoscopes.astro/seek.com for their online calculators. What would we do? What would we do without you? And this calculator will pull up a traditional version of your chart and will clearly show the seven hermetic lots in your chart. Whilst lots or parts are known as Arabic lots or parts. 
they actually originate from the Hellenistic time period. They are attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, who we talked about in recent videos, if you recall. During the Hellenistic age, the works of astrology were ascribed to Hermes. Hermes was a well-known Hellenistic figure who originated from the combination of Greek god Hermes and Egyptian god Thoth. His texts lay the foundation of various philosophical systems known as Hermeticism, and it is said that the lots were attributed to Hermes in a lost text known as the, I will insert the word right here, the Paneritos included calculations for seven planetary lots. Indeed, these were the seven original Hermetic lots. More lots were then created by astrologers later on, and then they eventually made their way to the Arabic world, and Arabic astrologers created their own lots. During this time period, lots also became known as parts. Though, before we do go any further, I just want to remind you of the seven Hermetic principles. So, in the Kabbalion, the Kabbalion conveys the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus. In this book, the seven Hermetic principles are written. These principles are the principle of mentalism, the principle of correspondence, the principle of vibration, the principle of polarity, the principle of rhythm, uh, the principle of cause and effect, and the principle of gender. And it is the principle of correspondence that explains this whole as above, so below, paraphrase. This principle communicates the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and the phenomena of the various planes of being and life. I just wanted to mention this because I believe it is important to remember the seven hermetic principles, especially if we are going to be discussing fate. And there is also something completing and quite spiritual about the number seven. It's quite interesting to think about, isn't it? The seven metals, the seven classical planets, seven wonders of the world, seven hermetic laws, seven hermetic principles, and I'm pretty sure there are seven major centaurs uh, to explore within astrology as well. Okay, so what are the seven hermetic lots? There are seven hermetic lots used in astrology and these are the lot of fortune, the lot of spirit, the lot of necessity, the lot of eros, the lot of courage, the lot of victory and the lot of nemesis. Each lot corresponds with one of the seven visible planets. Fortune with the moon, spirit with the sun, necessity with mercury, eros with venus, courage with mars, victory with, with Jupiter, and nemesis with Saturn. The name lot evokes lotteries and drawing lots. They are associated with chance. Sort of like playing the Wheel of Fortune, you spin it and wherever it lands marks your birth. The lots can be used in natal astrology and also in other forms of astrology, such as electional and horary, hor horary? Hooray. You can also use them to predict world events. So thinking about mundane astrology, they can be used when it comes to timing techniques such as solar returns, transits, annual perfections, and they are the foundation of a technique known as zodiacal releasing. So now we know what the seven hermetic lots are, where did they originate from? And how do you locate them within your chart? Let's go over them one by one whilst exploring their myths and also their functions. Let's explore their functions within your chart. Though before we do get into this, I recommend having a good understanding of the seven classical planets due to how each lot is associated with each of them. And I also want to give credit to astrologer Jake Green for his incredible work on the lots. There is not a lot of information out there. Um, but yes, you can find links to his work below. So let's begin by looking at the Lot of Fortune, perhaps the most popular lot of all. The Lot of Fortune is associated with the moon. Now in Greek mythology, there is a Greek goddess named Tyche. 
Tyche was the goddess of fortune, chance and fate. In a more favourable light, she was honoured as Eutychia, goddess of good fortune, luck, prosperity and success. She was a blindfolded goddess, symbolising how fortune can be taken or given blindly. And it is said that the lot of fortune in our charts points to our utmost success and prosperity. It can point toward our greatest joy, our greatest happiness, as well as our reputation, our skills, our vocation. Indeed, the lot of fortune indicates our most optimal source of prosperity and material wealth. But then keep in mind that such things can be taken away. But you see, it's also about health. It's associated with our physical body. Thinking about how health is wealth and the importance of looking after our body. And on a spiritual level, it is about receiving. And seeing as the moon changes signs so often, apparently the ancients would fear that Tai Chi would curse them. So this idea of receiving blessing, blessings and then having them be taken away. However, our luck can change. Perhaps by counting our blessings and practicing gratitude. It is also said that the lot of fortune acts as a different ascendant in your chart known as the lunar ascendant. Interesting to think about. Perhaps indicating how the lot of fortune acts as the unconscious side of your ascendant. Still, let's explore this more closely and think about the lot of fortune and its associations with the moon. Keep in mind that the moon rules the mother in astrology. After all, your moon sign shows the kind of mother you had or the type of relationship you had with your mother or how you perceived your mother. But you see, the moon also points toward our unconscious, our instinctive emotional reactions. The way we are when we are on autopilot. And like I said, the lot of fortune looks at our physical body and our health and it's our emotions that are stored in our physical body. There is more that I do want to say about this, but before I do, let's explore the lot of spirit. Now, the lot of spirit is also known as the lot of diamond. The lot of spirit is associated with the sun and acts as a guiding force in your life. Sort of like having a guardian angel guiding you, supporting you, wanting what is best for you. Or imagine having spirit guides or being in alignment with your higher self. Now, in ancient Greece, the Agathos Diamon was literally the noble spirit. It was the spirit of destiny and was a personal companion spirit that ensured health and good fortune. The Agathos Diamon was associated with snakes and was portrayed as a serpent. When the spirit left Alexandria, the whole city would be destroyed. The lot, lot of spirit then in our charts points toward career, it points toward faith, but it is also about our life force, it is about our destiny. This lot looks at our purpose as well as our willpower to fulfill that very purpose. This is very similar to the sun in our charts and so this is about following the light toward our divinity. Indeed, the lot of spirit is the guiding force and it's also about motivation, it's about determination, it's about will. And when we explore the lot of spirits associations with the sun, the sun rules the father in astrology, okay? So your sun sign can show the kind of father you had or the type of relationship you had with your father, but it's the sun that also indicates our conscious awareness, our conscious self, our individuality, our identity, the person we are striving to become. But we cannot follow the light toward our divinity without the lot of fortune, which again looks at our physical body, our health, our lifespan as well. Both the lot of fortune and spirit are very closely linked. Whilst the lot of fortune deals with our health, our fortune and our overall well-being, the lot of spirit indicates our ability to initiate in order to make use of what we receive. 
Perhaps you could say that the lot of fortune is the vehicle and the lot of spirit is the fuel. The lot of fortune is our physical selves and the lot of spirit is our spiritual selves, but the two exist together. Much like the sun and the moon act as a team within your chart, so do the lots of fortune and spirit. And the ascendant is the point of awareness, okay? The lens through which we see the world. And this same view is carried into all of the other houses around the chart, all of these areas of life within your chart. And as I said, the lot of fortune is linked to the moon, our unconscious, the darkness, but both the lot of fortune and the lot of spirit indicate our joy, happiness, and success. And it is said that the lot of fortune and the lot of spirit are activated by transits and progressions and so on. And so if you have a planet making a significant aspect to these lots, it's important to really explore that planet or many planets. The lots are not um, as active unless you have a personal planet making a significant aspect to it. But then again, like I said, they can be activated by transits. Moving on to the lot of necessity. So the lot of necessity is associated with Mercury. Now in Greek mythology, there is a goddess named Ananke, who was the goddess of necessity, compulsion, and inevitability. Ananke and Cronus, aka Saturn, were mates and they were intertwined. Together, they cracked the egg of creation and from this act, the earth, the heavens, the seas were Formed. Together, they drove the rotation of the heavens and the passage of time. And so perhaps necessity in our charts points toward the very passing of time. And well, the inevitable. And I think even in this way, the inevitable in that, well, we all D.I.E. Again, though, this is about fate. But it's also about the delivery of information throughout the cosmos. What we can create from the downloads we receive from the cosmos. At least this is my own view on the lot of necessity. But it is also said that Ananke and Cronus were beyond the reach of the younger gods. And so is it that is this to say that the lot of necessity is about innocence, young curiosity, what captured your attention when you were a child? And how was that lost as you grew older? Moreover, the lot of necessity, it signifies enemies, heated arguments, heated debates, hatred as well. Perhaps this is to say that this lot shows up in our charts as having strong disagreements or strong opinions toward others. And what we heavily dislike in others, especially with respect to their opinions and their views. And if this is the case, maybe such frustrations are linked to our own curiosity or our lack of curiosity. Perhaps the lot of necessity encourages us then to tap into our own curiosity rather than getting wrapped up in the minds of people we disagree with. Or is this to say that this lot is literally about the necessities of life. Ananke was also known as the mother of the Moire. Her children were the fates and it's the fates that came to symbolize birth, life and D-E-A-T-H. The necessity of such stages. To think that as soon as we are born, we are already dying. And so perhaps the lot of necessity shows up in our charts as the driving force behind our very feet. The lot of Eros. So the lot of Eros is associated with Venus. And in Greek mythology, Eros was the Greek god of carnal love. Son of Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Eros was the god of sensual love and desire. But there is another version of Eros that explains how Eros brought together elements of chaos into harmony. So looking at universal love here. But whilst the lot of Eros in our charts points toward things like love and desire and relationships, this lot also looks at pleasure as a whole. It signifies the things that please our spirit. And so as the lot of spirit, acts as this guiding force toward the lot of fortune, 
the lot of arrows symbolizes the things that satisfy your spirit. So think about how you fulfill your desires and how you feel content. Now, this is also about creating from a place of enjoyment, money or not, return or not. And you'll also consider if others will genuinely um, enjoy your creations. For me, this makes sense because my lot of spirit is in Scorpio in the third, and then my lot of Eros is in Cancer in the 11th. And I genuinely enjoy researching and going deeper into the information I create. I love writing, I love learning, I love posting my findings online via YouTube videos, hello. And you could say that the lot of Eros then in this respect indicates our interests and our hobbies. Essentially, it's about pleasing our spirit. This is also a lot which indicates all types of relationships. And yes, it plays a role when it comes to attraction and love and romance. But overall, this lot shows the kinds of people we like, the kinds of people we are drawn to. Naturally, this is also about the kinds of stuff which calls to us, right? And this lot can then influence our very career choices. Let's now turn our attention to the lot of courage. So the lot of courage is associated with Mars, also known as Tolma in the original Greek, in original Greek. And this translates to audacity, audacity, being daring, being risky, being brave, the willingness to take bold risks. The lot of courage is linked to the god of war, Ares. Now, apparently, Ares was the most unpopular of all of the Olympian gods. This was because he had a quick temper. He was aggressive. He was the god of bloodlust. And not many people wanted to have that energy around. Understandably so. And Athena, aka Pallas Athene, who was the goddess of war, handicraft and practical reason, well, she was much more preferred. She was a goddess of wisdom and military strategy, but taking risks and being daring, well, these things are not so strategic. And so when exploring the lot of courage in our charts, perhaps it points toward audacity. It shows up as boldness, but this lot is not so much about strategy and thinking things through. And this lot also shows up as, well, courage. So consider times when you have been courageous and also consider your fighting spirit, your raw power, your strength. I actually have a lot of courage in Pisces in the seventh house in my chart, but the moon is also in Aries in my chart and then I have Mars in Capricorn. And when I think about all of these moving parts, this makes sense because when it comes to approaching relationships, I'm not very bold, I'm not very courageous. I'm quicker to hide away or to avoid people I feel uncomfortable around. On that note though, this is why it's important to consider the lot, but also the planet the lot is associated with with. So for the lot of courage, look to Mars as well. For the lot of arrows, look to Venus. For the fortune, lot of fortune, look to the moon. For the lot of spirit, look to the sun. When looking at the lot of necessity, look for Mercury. When looking for the lot of victory, look to Jupiter. And then when looking at the lot of um, nemesis, look to Saturn. Moving on to the lot of victory. So the lot of victory is associated with Jupiter. In the original Greek myth, Jupiter is known as Nike. And this translates to victory. Nike was the winged goddess of victory and was victorious in both war and peaceful competition. She often carries the staff of Hermes and was identified with the goddess Athena at times. She has also appeared as the charioteer of Zeus and throughout her history, she has been um, allied with the most powerful gods in the Greek pantheon. She also has been depicted carrying Zeus to, well, victory. And to the Romans, she was named Victoria. And remember, the lot of victory is associated with Jupiter and Jupiter is associated with the ruler of the gods, Zeus. 
And then Athena, well, she was born from Zeus's head. Pallas Athena in our charts shows strategy, um, strategic thinking in this way and strategic fighting, wisdom, justice. And so when looking to the lot of victory, this lot shows up in our charts as competition, enterprise, success, benevolence, and of course, victory, going home with the win. And so when you're looking to this lot, also consider where Jupiter and Pallas are, but it's the lot of victory that is more geared toward that win, the victory dance, the OMG, we did it. And yes, I said we. See, this is also a lot that points toward our allies, our team, our brotherhood, our fellowship, basically the people who support our goals along the way, the people who join in on the win with us. Sometimes we don't have to fight alone. We don't have to compete alone. And this is interesting to think about because, like I said, with a lot of necessity, it can indicate things like enemies and hatred, but the lot of victory indicates allies fellowship, the people who support us. Lastly, let's explore the lot of Nemesis. The lot of Nemesis is associated with Saturn. Now, Nemesis comes from the Greek word Nemean, and this means to give what is due. How very Saturn. Makes me think of um, you reap what you sow. Still, the Greek goddess Nemesis was the goddess of justice, to use justice as a punishment. She was the goddess of revenge. She was the embodiment of jealousy, envy, and anger of the gods. And whilst the word Nemesis itself is associated with rivalry, so being an arch enemy, well, Nemesis is also about the resentment we feel toward those who commit terrible crimes, when we believe someone should be punished for their wrongdoings, or when we notice someone gaining good fortune when really they do not deserve it. And so whilst Nemesis can, of course, show up as jealousy and envy, it's also about justice. I mean, consider the number of people in power who get away with criminal acts or people who don't pay their taxes whilst everybody else has to. They're sneaky, they lie, they cover things up, they perform fraudulent acts. Indeed, this is how the lot of Nemesis can show up in our charts. And as Jake Green says in his works, how do you know if someone is being a hater or if their judgment about a situation is actually valid? Now, it was also Nemesis who cursed Narcissus. She cursed him by making him fall in love with his own reflection. And so perhaps the lot of Nemesis also shows up in our charts as a keeping our ego in check. And don't try to tear other people down. And if you do, you might be met with your own demise. See, this lot also looks at our downfall, our undoing, our fall from grace. And so perhaps it's also a good idea to keep an eye on our own evil, so to speak or to identify when we keep ourselves back from the victory. To remember that there are consequences to our actions. This law can signify things like prison, confinement, burdens, loss, D-E-A-T-H. But this is also a lot that signifies the kinds of people who hate to see you succeed. They hate to see you win. And remember when we talked about Taiki in the lot of fortune section? Well, the lot of Nemesis is sort of like the downside of that. In the mythology, Nemesis was regarded as the downside of Taiki. Nemesis checked extravagant favors, extravagant favors made by Taiki and was reviewed as being avenging and punishing. Nemesis could bring suffering, and so therefore, perhaps the lot of Nemesis shows up in our charts as keeping ourselves in check. And if others do not want to see us succeed, even though we aren't doing anything unjust, even though we are keeping ourselves on the street and narrow, well, perhaps this is where our own karma can come in to sort it out. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video talking all about the seven hermetic lots. 
Please let me know if you found this video to be helpful. Did you learn something new? I would really appreciate your feedback today. And like you, I am always learning. Like I said, you can find all of the sources I used in this video in the description box down below. And I do just wanna say a big thank you to my patrons over at Patreon. I appreciate you so, so much. And as always, let me know your thoughts and your opinions on today's video. But with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon.